Hey there crafters, today I'm going to be doing a video that I got a request on. Several months back, Shroom679 asked if I could make a little tutorial on something that I had showed in another video. And at the time I was in the middle of making all my Christmas things, but thank you so much Shroom for your patience. I am finally getting to making this little tutorial for you. So basically what I'm showing today is how to make just a little small basket. And we're gonna work in the round and instead of starting with a circle that's flat and then working up, we're gonna get it a little more rounded. So I'm gonna show how to make a tiny little basket. It's very cute. This is also a great way to kind of understand amigurami shaping and things like that. So let's get right into it. I'm going to be using some Red Heart Super Saver yarn and a five millimeter hook, but you can change what yarn you use and just use an appropriate hook size for the yarn. I'm going to start by making a slip knot and putting it onto my hook. And then we're going to work in the round. Now, if you like using the magic ring, feel free to use the magic ring. I'm personally not a fan, so I'm going to start by chaining three. One, two, and three. And then going back to the first chain that I made and slip stitching into that. And I kind of cross this tail over to the side. So entering through there and then working a slip stitch. And that's how I like to make a little ring for working in the round. But like I said, feel free to use the magic ring. So now for round one, we're going to start by chaining one and we're going to put six single crochet into the ring. So I'm just gonna go down through the center here and work my first single crochet, work a second single crochet, and I'll also take this tail end and wrap it around the hook so I can work around that as well. So work my second single crochet, work a third single crochet into the ring, single crochet number four, five, and six. So these are all single crochets worked into the ring. I've got six of them and now I need to slip stitch in my first stitch to join the round. So if you're having a hard time finding the first stitch, you can count backwards and go one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to insert right under the top of this stitch, yarn over and work a slip stitch by pulling through everything. And then I like to kind of pull it tight just to snug it up and have a nice snug join. And I can also take this tail piece, pull on that to close my ring. So now for round two, I'm going to work very similar as if I were working a flat circle versus something that's rounded. And so to do this, I'm going to chain one. And then in my first stitch, I'm going to work two single crochet. So this is my first single crochet and then a second single crochet into that same spot. And I'm gonna do that in all six of my spaces going all the way around. So two single crochet in every stitch from round one and we'll end up with a total of 12 single crochet for round two. So that's two single crochet in that stitch, two single crochet in the next stitch. And I'm gonna put two in every stitch and I'll meet you when we join. So I've worked my 12 stitches for round two. Again, I'm going to find the very first stitch of the round and slip stitch into the top of it. Again, if you're not sure where the first stitch is, you can count backwards, but I can tell that it's this guy right here. And I'm gonna slip stitch right there to join the round. Again, pulling nice and snug. So what we've done so far has created a flat circle. What we want to do now is to start slowly making more of a dome shape. And so we're gonna make a variation from how we would if we were making a flat circle. So if I were making a flat circle for round three, I would do a repeating pattern of increase one single crochet, increase one single crochet. But because I don't want to make it flat, but I still wanna give it a little bit of a round shape, I'm going to work an increase and then two single crochet, increase, two single crochet. So here we go for round three. Start by chaining one. In the first stitch, we're gonna work a single crochet increase, which means we're working two single crochet. And we're working in the same spot where we joined. So this is one single crochet. And this is my second single, whoop. And this is my second single crochet into the same stitch. Then in each of my next two stitches, I'm going to work one single crochet. So one single crochet into the second stitch and one single crochet into the third stitch. And then I'm going to repeat that. Work two single crochet into the next stitch. So one 
and two into the same spot, and then one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So one in this spot, and one single crochet in the following spot. And this pattern gets repeated four times. So we're gonna do an increase, two single crochet, four times around, and we'll end up with a total of 16 stitches. So I'm almost to the end of my round, and we're gonna join it the same way that we joined rounds one and two. So once we join round three, you can see that we went from a flat circle to starting to curve up the side. So at this point, I can either continue kind of rounding it out, and if I want to continue rounding it out, I would work an increase and then maybe four single crochet in between, but I'm ready to start going up the sides of my basket. So for round four and onward until it's the height that I want, I'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch of the round. So I'm gonna start with a chain one for my turning chain, and then in round three, we had a total of 16 stitches. So for round four, I'm going to work 16 single crochet, and I'm just working one single crochet in every stitch, no increases. So I'm gonna work that all the way around and join the same way I've joined the previous rounds. So here's what we end up with after working round four. Now something I do wanna point out is even though we're working evenly, which is going to start creating the straight sides of our basket, the first round or two where you work evenly will still end up a little bit wider than your rounds where you do the increases. So you wanna stop doing increases just a little bit before your basket is the size you want it to be because it will end up just a little bit wider when we start working the even rounds. But now for rounds five and going forward, I can just work the same way we did for round four where I chain one and then work 16 single crochet. And after I work a few rounds of 16 single crochet, the side walls of the little basket, the little bowl shape will be very straight and they'll all be the same width and you'll get a nice cute little basket. So I'm gonna work a few more rounds and then I'll show you what we end up with. So at this point, I have worked six rounds on my little basket and rounds four, five, and six are all worked the same way. But as you can see, it creates this nice little bowl where instead of having a flat bottom, it has a nice rounded bottom. So part of the takeaway with this project is that if you work a flat circle and then work up the sides, you're not gonna have as rounded as a bottom. So the way to make it gradually curve versus being a flat circle and going straight up is to continue adding increases in your rounds until you get to the size you want, but each time that you do increases, do fewer increases. So here's what I mean by this. Round one was just six single crochet. We just, you know, we're starting off. For round two, we worked an increase in all six stitches. So that's six increases. For round three, we wanted to keep getting wider, but we wanted it to kind of curve and be dome shaped versus staying flat. So we still did increases for round three, but we did fewer increases in round three than we did in round two. So in round two, we had six increases. In round three, we only had four increases. And then once you get the size you want, just work evenly around and you'll start creating the straight sides of your basket. I hope y'all enjoyed this project and thanks for watching.